Oh, welcome back to another Sebastian story. Oh my God. Well, we're back at it again, telling our sweet boy's story. And of course, he's our Cani Corso Italiano. And he's a little bit hungry today, so we're featuring cooking with pappies. Of course, we're in winter here. It's getting a little bit cold, so what better time than to get a nice big roaring fire going? Uh, but we've got some delicious things getting ready in the kitchen. Uh, all dog friendly, of course. That's the whole point. It's going to be delicious food that both of us can eat. We get to enjoy it together as the little family that we are. And so with cooking with fire, of course, you don't want to actually cook with the flame itself. That's how you burn and char your food. You want to let all of the wood burn down for a while until you have nice coals. Uh, it's all the heat generation. You don't have big flames. You've got all the nice hot spots down low. And at which time I can then put our grate over the top. And here's a little trick. This is just simply an oven rack. We bought our new oven a couple of years back and I saved the racks out of it because this is, was my intention. Uh, it's perfect uh, grilling grate and it goes right over the top of the bricks. Problem solved. So while this fire's burning down for a while and we've got uh, their coals forming, we're gonna move back into the kitchen and start getting all of our dinner prepped. We got our sweet potatoes all prepped and of course they are just one of the most powerhouse nutritional ingredients you could ever use for both yourself and your dogs. They're delicious but incredibly nutritious. We start getting our sweet potatoes loaded into our cast iron and of course this is the perfect uh, instrument for cooking over fire. You can't really hurt cast iron with anything except water so keep it oiled and it'll serve you forever. Oh and I'm dropping sweet potatoes everywhere. Hold on honey those got to get cooked. And our main course for this evening are pork fillets wrapped in bacon. You know, these dogs really have a hard life, can't you tell? Uh, of course, this is uh, there's a little plastic skewer there. I will need to take those out before starting the grilling. Uh, and then, of course, we got our sweet potatoes all cut and ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get those on the fire now because they will need a good bit of time to cook down. Sweet potatoes do take uh, in the oven a good hour. When we're doing this kind of low and slow over the fire, it'll take a little bit more time. Now, as I was pointing out inside, we've got these plastic skewers on the uh, holding the bacon on here. Uh, this is also a reason why I'm going to cook these in a pan rather than directly on the grill top. I don't want the bacon to fall in. That's that, that's a pretty big sacrifice, you know. Can't lose your bacon. So we've got our pork ready, and now we just need to simply wait. Let the potatoes cook down for a while. Probably let them go. I'd say a good 30 minutes or least, at least. And I'll grab a spatula, flip them over, see how they're looking, and. Um, uh, adjust my cooking time as needed. Went ahead and pulled the sweet potatoes back. I uh, noticed the heat's actually getting a little too high, We're getting some black spots on here, and don't want to char them. Uh, so we're gonna, that's the fun thing. You will need to modulate the heat. There's no knob to turn. Just move it to the cold side or off the fire completely. That's what all the bricks are for. And as you can see, the sweet potatoes do cook down. The plate was originally kind of overflowing when I started. They very quickly lose moisture and start to shrink. So you fit everything back on the, uh, on the cast iron as you intended. And when you need uh, uh, to switch the heat to make sure that everything's getting cooked consistently or evenly, uh, just go ahead and rotate. Did a little too well here on making a really hot fire today. So hey, what are you gonna, can't complain too much, I guess. And now you can start to see the coals really forming. And uh, this is what I meant. I was just breaking up the, uh, the, uh, the wood a little bit. We have so much heat coming out that uh, it's time to move things around. And that way I've got plenty of cooking space and hot area to cook so I can add the pork. Looking good so far. What do you think, Luna? You wanna come check it out? How about you, Pappy? Come here. Come here, Pappy. I should get down here. Oh, my sweet Pappies, come on. Come on over here. Pappy, come here. You're a good boy, come here. Hi, honey, good girl. Good girl, come here, you're a good boy. 
Come on, Sebastian. Good boy. Come on. Come up. Oh, there we go. They're too busy playing. They don't care about the cooking. They're not. They're not having to do the work. Cooking with pappies. And now we've really got the good cooking fire going. You can see all that nice white ash. That's all nothing but heat in there. Uh, of course, a few tiny little flames, but uh, that is nothing but pure heat and perfect for cooking over. And as you can see, we did get a little bit more heat than we anticipated, so I'll probably have to trim off some of that uh, uh, burnt ends of the sweet potatoes. Don't want that going to the dogs, of course. But nevertheless, uh, they're cooking well now and uh, uh, going to be quite delicious. But in speaking of cooking for dogs, uh, a lot of times when people have uh, dogs with upset stomachs and whatnot, sweet potatoes and pumpkin are always a good recommendation. Uh, it's very easy to digest, full of fiber, of course, and you know, you're know you not adding in uh, any of your special seasonings and whatnot. It's just plain, and it gives them everything they need. And yeah, you can see right here, We'll just go ahead and tearing off the uh, the charred part. Potatoes perfectly good. Throw it in the fire. Got my grilling gloves. Make sure I don't burn my hands. Thank you, Ryan. Obviously, cast iron gets extremely hot, so you do really want to be careful. Make sure you don't burn yourself. Fire's hot, and everything it touches gets hot too. Who knew? You good boy, Pappy. Come here. Come on, Pappy. I think Sebastian's a little afraid of the uh, fire today. Come on, buddy, come here. Come here. He's a shy boy, what can I say? Little Honey's not very shy, though. Oh, Mr. Yawny Boy. Don't eat the grass, honey. You got delicious food coming. Yeah, delicious food. <coughs> Mister. And now that we've let the sweet potatoes cook for a while, I think it's about time to start getting ready uh, the cast iron to cook the pork in. I want to get this good and hot uh, before I put the pork in to make sure we get a nice little sear on both sides of the pork fillets. Uh, and then just let them cook and keep alternating around and just use the heat as it comes. That's the key with cooking with fire. <laughs> Your heat is not constant. You do have to keep an eye on things. You do need to feel it out. You need to rotate your pans a lot and just try to keep it as even as you possibly can. And now that I can see uh, in the uh, in the meat pan, we actually had bacon cooking in there earlier. So gonna have some really wonderful flavors in here. The fat that was in there is now starting to bubble. So that is my cue to go ahead and add the pork fillets. Just trying to keep, I did take those skewers out as I mentioned. So just trying to keep the bacon wrapped around them as best as I can. And now I'll let each fillet sear for a few minutes and then flip them over and do the other side. Oh, we've got that bacon smell coming through already. Oh, this is going to be delicious. And again, when you're cooking over fire, you just want to keep moving the pans around. Just make sure you're using the heat as evenly as you can. Obviously, in this ring of fire, there's going to be a cold side, and then the hotter side is in the middle. So you want to just keep alternating. You sweet pappies. Uh, so in preparation to uh, get the pork off the grill, of course, once that happens, went ahead and got myself a clean plate. Uh, pork is just one of those meats, or really any raw meat. You just don't want to uh, recombine, of course. Everybody should know that, but I figured I'd share that information. And as you can see, we got a beautiful sear on the pork already. Uh, and because the bacon is no longer secured, I did group them together to try and keep the bacon uh, as attached as possible, but we'll hopefully not lose it all the way by the end of their cooking. And that's the other nice thing about cooking over fire. Not only do you get the wonderful aromatics of cooking with fire uh, and all the wood, uh, but we're also cooking bacon. I can't tell you how wonderful this smells right now. Wish you were here. And as we keep uh, 
rendering more juices out of the pork, just keep rotating the pan and let it redistribute across the, uh, the fillets. Let gravity do its job. Personally, I've always really enjoyed pork. It's just one of those delicious meats. You can do just about anything with it. Um, had it not been for all of the bacon and all the flavor that's already there, one thing I like to do for the dog specifically is add rosemary. It tastes delicious to us, but rosemary is also very beneficial for their digestion as well as a few other things. Um, it's just some of those simple ways that you can take what you already do for yourself or for your family and extend it to the rest of your family. Dogs are family, aren't they? The color, the smell, this is just going to be delicious. Let me finish flipping these around and I'll show you guys a close up. So I'm having a bit of a hard time keeping the bacon uh, attached to the pork and making sure that it cooks evenly as well. I'm trying to roll them onto their sides. Make sure everything is cooked. Yeah, just gonna go have to uh, separate the bacon and let that cook in the pan as well. It's just not holding on well enough except for this one where it's very nicely attached. And again, just keep moving everything around. You want to get that heat um, hitting everything as evenly as possible. And of course, these big strips of bacon, um, they're pretty meaty. I'm, I'm impressed. No wonder they couldn't hold on. They're probably just too heavy. I've rolled the pork fillets onto their sides as well, so we're just going to sear all six sides of these little fillets. It should be delicious, but most importantly, cooked all the way. And as you can see, unfortunately, these sweet potatoes are getting charred just a little bit too much for these pappies, but just peel it off and you've got a nice fresh sweet potato underneath. Simple as that. And one way with pork that you tell that it's done cooking, uh, you'll actually start to see some of the juices run clear. And we're getting to that point, but I can still see some pink spots. These are pretty thick fillets. So I'm uh, going to keep rolling them around for a while because I'm sure that in the center, they're still not quite done yet. We are starting to lose a little bit of heat in the coals. Uh, we've probably been burning for a good hour now already, uh, cooking these potatoes down. Um, we may need to wrap in foil and finish in the oven, or just wrap in foil and use the heat that's in the cast iron. These pans stay incredibly hot for a very long time, so we can use that to our advantage. And as you can see, we're just finishing on the uh, stovetop here. We lost a little too much heat outside, so... Getting the bacon nice and crisp, and the pork should be completely cooked very shortly. And of course, now that everything's cooked, the finished result. And the absolute worst part, we have to wait for it to cool. You guys going to be okay with that? Can you wait for it to cool? My sweet boy. Your good boy. Go, go. We just got to wait for it to cool, poppies. Are you hungry, Major Puppy? Are you ready for some puppy dinner? All right, buddy, come get it. Chew it up, Happy. Are you ready for your dinner, little honey? All right, come here. Come here, little honey. Chew it up, baby. You're a good girl. So as you can see, it turned out to be quite a delicious meal for our sweet babies. Uh, you know, this is what we do. We love to cook meat, and uh, I eat meat too, so I can uh, enjoy it with them every time I uh, get a chance. And 
carrots, sweet potatoes, all these wonderful uh, basic ingredients are excellent for your animals. And so when you combine the meal with their kibble or whatever they normally eat, it really becomes a well-balanced, delicious feast for everybody. And we get to have fun together doing it. As always, thank you very much for watching. We're having a great, we're having a really great time telling these stories, and we'll be back again soon with more. Thanks again.